Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone, and um, anonymous uh, person that uh, that uh, solicited solicited my invitation. I'm very grateful uh, for you all to be to be here. And uh, I mean, my primary affiliation is the University of, of Amsterdam, uh, where I'm uh, I'm currently based. And uh, what I thought of presenting to you today is um, uh, is a survey paper that uh, is forthcoming, actually, uh, titled Archives and uh, AI, Artificial Intelligence, an overview of current debates and future perspectives. Now, uh, to give you, um, well, first of all, it's online as a preprint. If you'd like to delve deeper, uh, that's, that's the link. And I shared the link to this uh, slide deck in the chat for your convenience. Um, and it will eventually come out, I think, in a few months uh, um, uh, for the Journal on Computing and Cultural Heritage. Um, now, the, this is work done with, uh, with other people at the University of Amsterdam, and we asked ourselves, uh, the following question, right? Can we try to uh, map uh, the current intersection, let's say, between these two uh, fields of research and communities, archives and, and the practice of record keeping on the one hand and artificial intelligence on the other hand, which as uh, all of you know, is, has been quite booming in recent years. Uh, and uh, so we wanted to focus on recent trends, recent, let's say, interactions, but also we didn't want to focus on, let's say, purely technical work, right? So we didn't want to focus on uh, specific technical challenges that are, of course, highly important and previous presentation is witness to that. Uh, but we instead wanted to focus on uh, more the uh, theoretical and professional uh, interactions. So let's put it this way. Uh, so we took uh, this perspective that I have highlighted in bold there, so we, we try to encompass professional, cultural and societal consequences of automated systems for record keeping processes and for archivists. Okay, that was the idea. I'm happy to tell you more about how we went about selecting uh, the relevant literature, but I'll leave that as a uh, for, um, for questions if you, if you like. There is also a slide at the end that I won't go. True. So I'll jump directly into, uh, you know, basically what we found and uh, keeping in mind that I'm giving you the summary of a summary. So uh, I'll try to be, you know, just highlight a few things and there is much more in the paper. Uh, we found a few themes uh, that I will uh, refer to. The first one uh, is rather broad uh, and we named it theoretical and professional considerations uh, within archives and uh, interaction between archives and artificial intelligence. Um, a clear trend that emerges from the literature is that AI is uh, um, strengthening uh, a process that was already taking place since pretty much, I mean, the web and, and uh, digitization, which is that uh, archives are uh, not only uh, viewed or can be not only viewed as let's say traditionally as aggregates of records, but also as data in a more unstructured way. And in particular, not necessarily following the traditional principles of provenance and original order, which uh, all of you know are extremely important in order to uh, organize and then also to access uh, records, but also uh, going about finding new ways, complementary ways to access the contents of the records, such as using the content, right? so using data mining. This is a very strong trend that AI is reinforcing, not inventing, reinforcing. Um, on the other hand, though, there is another trend which is uh, nascent, and I think it's also very, very interesting, uh, in particular for this community, which goes the other way around. Right? So uh, not necessarily using AI to, do, uh, to reconsider uh, the use of records, but also using theoretical and uh, um, practical uh, knowledge coming from the uh, archival community in order to make a contribution in artificial intelligence. Um, just a bunch of papers on this and very recent ones, but uh, and connected to the big debates about uh, fairness, bias and other issues in the data First of all, uh, that is fed into uh, artificial intelligence systems, but also systems themselves when they are used 
let's say, in, in, in the wild or in society. Um, which is that there are archival principles and an archival know-how that could and should be used in order to improve our understanding and use of data that is fed to an AI. Uh, I'm naming there a few uh, of these principles, right? Provenance, again, appraisal, so uh, critical selection, contextualization, um, transparency and accountability, so informing uh, people that use a certain data set about what it, it contains, what it doesn't contain, and limitations thereof. Uh, so this is something that um, some papers are starting to suggest, right? Uh, archivists to come into, uh, into that debate and maybe this will happen in the future. Um, second theme is that of the automation of, of archival processes. This is a little bit more uh, established already. Um, so there are many contributions that go about uh, automating part or, or several components of a traditional uh, archival uh, process, let's say pipeline, from appraisal to search to information extraction in between, such as handwriting recognition, uh, for example. Um, there is much less though, still, in terms of uh, discussion, but uh, even more coming up with uh, um, a framework uh, which encompasses the technical but also the ethical and societal implications of using AI in archives. Right? So using AI to uh, automate uh, part of these uh, pipelines that uh, of course include a lot of critical decisions at every step. Um, another theme that emerges, so when I say team, again, I say it's basically a bunch of work that we individuated um, in the literature is that of organizing and accessing, accessing sorry, uh, old and new archives. So on the one hand, there are quite a few uh, experimentations in how to uh, create and provide novel experiences to access uh, historical archives. Um, and in particular, to start to find solutions that are more targeted towards uh, specific user bases. Right? So for example, there is quite a bit of work in terms of um, let's say digital humanists or people with, with uh, competencies in machine learning, um, archivists and historians, to say, in order to try to develop interfaces that uh, innovate in, in the way um, they provide access to records. But also there is quite a lot of work coming up in terms of uh, um, new forms of archives, right? Uh, let's say born digital art. Uh, some examples there are the web, of course, web archiving is a thing since many years. A uh, little bit more recent developments, social media archiving, uh, the internet of things, right? So data from devices, et cetera, et cetera. So this will grow uh, necessarily over time. Uh, whether it is in the scope of action of archivists or not is an open question. And if so, how to do it is another open question. Um, to go towards uh, conclusions, um, what uh, you will find in the paper eventually, if you want to, to take a look at it, is that we have used um, a quite well-known model in, uh, in uh, archival science, which is the records continuum model. Uh, and we use it in order to uh, make sense of the literature that we have found. Um, now, there is a lot that could be said about this model, but in a nutshell, this is a, an illustration that encapsulates what it tries to, uh, to accomplish. And in particular, it introduces uh, four dimensions um, that, in a sense, uh, try to um, convey the life cycle uh, of, uh, of a document that uh, is created, then becomes a record when it's captured into an archive. Uh, it is organized as part of an archive, and then it is pluralized or it is made available uh, to, uh, to people for, for their use. It is also, uh, at least in my opinion, quite uh, helpful in uh, distinguishing between uh, what is evidence, what is uh, uh, contained into, into these traces, uh, but what is also the, um, uh, the, the record uh, so this document becoming part of, of an archive, uh, but also what are the entities that are involved into the production of evidence? This is the identity, um, let's say, uh, axis there. 
and what are the activities that they are involved into the transactionality. So I'm not doing justice, of course, to this model, but uh, it is very rich and it is very useful to uh, um, uh, to think about records uh, in in the context of archives. Uh, all this to say that what we have found is the following: that the intersection of um, uh, archival practice, microcubic practice, and artificial intelligence seems to be happening mostly in the lower uh, section of the of this illustration of the records continuum model, or if you like, at the external uh, dimensions, right? So the pluralized dimension that you can think about search, indexation, and search, and the organized um, dimension. There is uh, much less. Um, close to nothing in terms of creating uh, evidence. Uh, there is something in terms of uh, capturing activity. Uh, we don't really know why, but this is what we have uh, found. And I'm, I'm very interested if, if any of you has any interesting speculation about why this might be the case at the moment. Uh, and then to conclude, a uh, few words of outlook. Um, so the first one is that uh, we also found some, um, um, let's say questioning or, or worry, let's put it this way, from uh, practitioners in terms of um, how all these experiments um, might become more substantially part of the archival uh, theory, practice, and also infrastructure. I think this is happening um, steadily and, and gradually. Uh, but uh, several papers underline how this is still an open challenge by all means. Um, secondly, and I'm reiterating a little bit what I mentioned before, um, several authors underline the need to, uh, to develop a stronger, a clear ethical framework to use artificial intelligence in the context of uh, uh, archives. And uh, this should happen uh, also through developing a better understanding of how uh, systems that embed an AI um, might have an impact or have an impact on research and other uses of archives. Right? So for example, uh, selection and search. Um, and finally, uh, this is maybe uh, an encouragement uh, as well. I think the door is wide open and we think the door is wide open for a contribution the other way around. So I, I mentioned this before, I just wanted to stress it again. Um, the debate about the uh, quality and documentation or lack thereof of data sets that are used in machine learning is, uh, is really booming, is really taking place as we speak, so to say. And I think uh, in there, the, um, the community of archivists should really make a contribution that would be very beneficial. And with that, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. And thank you very much again. And happy to answer any question you might have. Giovanni, thank you so much. That's a, uh, an excellent overview, uh, which is hard to do, especially in such short uh, timeframes. Are there any questions for Giovanni? I do have, I have a question, so I will leap in and, and maybe others can marshal their thoughts if they'd like. Um, on your fourth slide, you talk about archival principles being applied to data used in AI systems, including things like provenance. I can, I can imagine using AI for things like appraisal fairly easily, like what is this about or characterize it. Um, but how, how, what's an example of using AI on and working working on provenance or in relation to the uh, concept of provenance? Yes, so um, oftentimes uh, data sets, I mean, there are different degrees of creation in, in data sets that are used in, uh, in machine learning uh, practice. Um, and to, to give you maybe a couple of extremes, right? So we go from uh, data sets that are used for, uh, so to say, shared tasks, right? So competitions, if you like, of uh, practitioners that try to, let's say, solve a problem as it is represented in a data set and a measurement, a metric of success. Um, often, not always, those data sets are highly curated uh, and therefore they uh, contain uh, sufficient or quite substantial information about where the data comes from. 
including uh, the procedure that has been used in order to select it. Or if that is not possible, at least, yeah, provenance information. Uh, but in many other cases, this is not um, happening. In particular, it is not happening when uh, an AI is used on large amounts of data. Uh, an example is that of language models that I, I named just because I, I know them a little bit more. So these are um, models that are widely used. For example, if you use Google search, if you use Google translate, you are using a language model. Right? So they encapsulate a way that the language is being used uh, through a large amount of data. Uh, and usually what happens there is that like everything goes in and the approach is the more, the better in terms of performance, but there is no um, knowledge about provenance, if not, yeah, all the web or all, um, you know, all data coming from a huge source. And uh, there is no or very little appraisal in terms of critically selecting what should go in or not. Um, so in there, it's um, the two are, are connected, of course, but uh, some, um, some authors in computer science as well, they are suggesting that much better documentation should be released and attached to any data set that is used with an AI informed by uh, those principles. Thank you. That's a very uh, bright connection that you've made. Giovanni Aurelia, maybe I can ask you both a question. Um, Giovanni, your, your talk resonates with the keynote that we had at Stanford for the Fantastic Futures Conference, uh, where we had um, an expert from industry basically say, the last thing you want data scientists to do is curate the data, because they want to do the algorithms, They're, they just want data, and this is a great role for libraries, archives, and museums to play, is to come up with quality data with things like provenance and um, un understanding uh, any biases that may be implicit. Where, where do you see AI work in archives happening? I don't, are you aware of a lot of archives that are building data science teams? Or do you think it is more through partnership where perhaps archives are providing the data sets and the, the data science is coming through uh, experts in um, either industry or other research centers? Yeah, good question. I mean, my 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 knowledge is a bit limited by my experience, so it's mostly uh, mostly Europe and UK. Um, uh, what I see there is that there usually is a strong uh, collaboration with one or a few uh, providers, uh, commercial providers, uh, that um, that specialize. I mean, that usually came from big digitization campaigns and, and then they started to also deliver deliver services in terms of uh, handwriting recognition, OCR, etc. So there is a, uh, there are those kind of partnerships that keep uh, evolving over time, let's say. Um, and but I also think that many archives are increasingly uh, recognizing the importance of uh, of having internal expertise sometimes that develops into uh, a start and then a growing data science team. Uh, sometimes that is instead, uh, you know, persons that have at least the expertise and are uh, much more capable of understanding um, and also buying services from, uh, from uh, data providers. Um, but this is, this is very much growing. There is also demand on universities for training uh, training for uh, archivists and other professionals in the, in the glam sector that is much uh, or should be much more aware of uh, both the technical components of this work but also the as I mentioned uh, the, the ethical and societal uh, elements and in that intersection um, so I think all this is is, uh, is growing let's say uh, somewhat organically um, and I think in the years to come is going to, to be much larger component of, of an archive, let's say. Uh, 